Welcome to Unreal University. About a month ago, Unreal Engine released a development roadmap which outlines the features that they plan to bring to the engine. In this video, I'm going to cover all of the major announcements that they have planned. Quick disclaimer, it's important to note that whilst the roadmap outlines Epic Games intentions, not all of the listed features are guaranteed to be implemented. These are the areas that they plan to focus on and develop over time. So earlier this year, Unreal Engine announced their procedural content generation tools. These are a tool set for creating your own procedural content and tools inside of Unreal Engine. The PCG allows artists, designers, and programmers the ability to build fast and iterate quickly. I did make a quick video covering this when it did release. I'll link it somewhere on the screen now. So they're working on an update for this called the Runtime Hierarchical Generation. This will basically allow users at runtime to generate procedurally generated worlds. Users will be able to define a grid size and generation distances per grid. The major benefit of this is the ability to create dynamic environments with complex rules generated all in real time. Furthermore, this feature improves editor workflows by generating content only around the camera or a designated actor within the PCG generation source. This helps streamline the development process and enhance efficiency. They will also add the ability to have manual editing, so you'll basically be able to edit specific parts of your procedurally generated work. They also announced rendering improvements to Nanite. If you don't know, Nanite is Unreal Engine 5's virtualized geometry system which uses a new internal mesh format and rendering technology to render pixel scale detail and high object counts. Nanite's data format is also highly compressed and supports fine grain streamlining with automatic LODs, so it basically helps make meshes very efficient. The dynamic programmable displacement feature will allow you to tweak Nanite meshes in real time using displacement maps or procedural materials. Nanite displacement adds triangles at runtime, adjusting the detail in the displacement map. The main benefit of this feature is that you can use lighter source meshes in the creative process. You can enjoy material driven and animated displacement effects on your Nanite meshes, and you'll be able to easily craft, interpret Nanite landscapes with this feature. They also plan to update splines. Spline meshes play a crucial role in embedding static meshes along the curve of a spline. It's useful for tasks like creating roads on a landscape terrain. However, there's been a gap in supporting spline meshes as Unreal Engine scenes increasingly adopt Nanite for enhanced content. The latest update introduced experimental support for spline meshes. Ongoing efforts include fine tuning performances and memory usage, addressing issues like cracks and refining aspects such as level streaming. They also mentioned that they're working on Nanite optimized shading. So this is an ongoing effort to basically transition nanite materials from conventional shading to compute shaders. This shift will basically bring multiple optimization possibilities. The main objective of this is to basically replace the pixel shader path, delivering enhanced performance on both CPU and GPU for computers. This transition will not only improve code maintainability, but also enable the implementation of advanced nanite material functionalities they are also working on updating their orthographic rendering. This is mainly used in architecture, manufacturing, and games for a specific visual style. This gained experimental support in Unreal Engine version 5.3. Unreal Engine is also working on improving its performance across multiple platforms. For Apple devices, improvements in metal support are expected. This basically includes better shader transition, faster compile times, and improved code generation. Metal CPP modernizes the usage of Metal, potentially resulting in better shader compilation for Mac platforms. On Linux, Unreal Engine is working to bring Vulkan up to par with DirectX 12. This will allow the full suite of ray tracing to be used on this platform. Unreal Engine is also investing and improving its experience of extended reality development. This includes enhanced controller support for various devices ensuring a more inclusive and user-friendly approach. They are also improving their character and animation tools. In Unreal Engine 5.3, they released the Skeletal Editor. This is basically a new set of tools that will allow you to create and modify skeletal meshes. With these tools, you can make modifications to skeletons, edit skins, weights, and paint maps. So they plan to add a couple of more features to this. They plan to expand component editing 
This allows easier editing and the selection of vertex bones and weights. It introduces component snapping for bones and offers additional component selection schemes. They plan animation insights, which will allow the creation of bones and weights in context to your animations. It will enable the transformation of bones while painting them and allows bone changes to be referenced in animations. Characterization, they plan to simplify bone and weight creation tools with improved starting points and helpful defaults. It will introduce the ability to copy, paste, and duplicate bones. They also plan to have new gizmos, so they're gonna have redesigned gizmos for the translate, rotate, and scale for more intuitive posing and an animation interface. They also plan to improve the look and style of it. They also plan to overhaul the animation channel box for a more user-friendly experience. In a bid to enhance the cinematic creation experience and cater to a broader audience, Unreal Engine will focus on improving sequences readability with the following features. Outsliner columns for track states. The sequencer hierarchy tree will include new columns on the left side, allowing users to easily view and access the pin, mute, lock, and solo states of tracks. Keyframe status indicators. Keyframe icons for animatable properties in sequencer dynamically change based on the current keyframe status, providing instant visual cues about whether a property is keyed, not keyed, partially keyed or modified. Advanced syntax and display modes. Integration of advanced search syntax filtering from the outliner and content browser into the sequencer tree. This enables customizable filtering and the option for temporary sequence views slash display modes based on the selection of items in the sequencer tree, offering flexible content viewing and experiences for animation and cinematic creators. Sequencer tree look and color improvements. A major overhaul of the look and color of the sequencer tree to enhance visibility and make it easier for creators to navigate and understand the contents within the sequencer tree. They also plan to make updates to Unreal Engine's user interface. For example, with the quick UMG preview window. This will provide UI designers and developers with rapid testing environments for user widgets without the need for them to run the play in editor this will significantly reduce iteration time when creating intricate and dynamic user interfaces, particularly those displayed during specific gameplay events like picking up an item or winning the game. Key features include the ability to preview how widgets respond to user inputs and be able to automate UI testing by replaying inputs and checking UI states. So those are some of the major features that Unreal Engine have planned for their roadmap. If you want to see a list of everything that they have planned, I'll leave a link to that somewhere in the description of this video. I hope you've enjoyed this and are now more informed about what Unreal Engine is working for in the future. If you did, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.